G'day folks. Well, it's time to come and look at this Samsung again because I got something in the post today and that would be a new Tcon board or not, I shouldn't say new but a good second hand one from I think it's bestvideoboards.com uh, I actually bought it through eBay so I'm going to swap this out now I don't have a heat sink for it but this one seems to be glued on with something it's sticky, like it moves but it's not um, like rigid glued on there so I'll have to find some uh, adhesive thermal paste but for now I'm just going to pop the new board in there very quickly test it without the heat sink and just see what happens if the fault's still the same then perhaps the issues up here on these panel um, driver strips or the chip on films but I'd expect a dead bar if it was a chip on film issue everything seems to be coming back to Tcon or worse maybe back to here but we'll give it a try with the Tcon board it was relatively inexpensive my main concern with this is you can see there's a bit of a bow in the board from these uh, conductive pads on the back touching the RF shield it's pushed the board away from the panel so my concern is I ah, ran out of memory on the camera for a sec there but you got the gist of what I was saying um, that's a replacement board it does look a little bit different even looking through the heat shield because it's missing these connectors but they don't go anywhere on the other board anyway and this one's got the same date stamp and uh, part number so all we can do is put it in there and see what happens. Just going to disconnect these panel ribbons very carefully and uh, go from there. Yeah, in case you missed the symptom that I was um, diagnosing previously in these videos, you can see half the screen's quite dark. Uh, you can still see text, but the background is really bad, and the text takes a while to um, react. So if I toggle out of there, you can see the uh, fade away on that blue background of the TV display very slow so it's basically a half screen dark and distorted fault so we'll turn it off again and uh, unplug and I'll finish uh, removing this I just quickly connected it back up while I uh, had the chance I just thought I'd show it again okay so that's just a little side by side comparison between the old board and the new one uh, without taking the heat sink off yet uh, you can see these connectors are present on this board and my only guess is that they would be extra inputs say if your digital board had a different cable like one of this size, a connector of this size on the other end you'd plug it in through there rather than there whereas this one seems to have eliminated them and it's ex exclusively for this panel that's just a theory but I don't know I might be, I'll probably be right, it might not be uh, everything else looks exactly the same so I'm going to uh, pop this one in and uh, give a very quick run this chip won't get too hot too quick at least famous last words that's what I think um, I might just try and find a little heat sink to stick on it for the time being but I don't know if I have any that small an old CPU cooler or something maybe a heat sink off an old uh, 486DX2 chip would be ideal for that although since this one moves I don't have much of a risk of breaking the uh, BGA chip or anything like that that's my only concern because I glue heat sinks on last time I tried to remove a glued on heat sink on a main board it, it um, broke the solder bowls under the BGA chip and ruined the board but this one actually wants to move so I'll try and extract it why not uh, apart from that it looks the same should do the same thing let's put it in and see what it does yeah. they have thermal pads too I can't remember what these are called but it's uh, aluminium oxide and uh, like in gel form with a uh, silica, silicon type grease or oil silicaceous goo pads whatever you want whatever I like to call them <laughs> there's one on the back for a little SMD power reg or something on the back of the board and then there's uh, five of them on the front one for the uh, wise view is it AMLCD chip it says uh, EMU sorry TMU414811 and the other one's a uh, Samsung chip as you can see SEMP73 full HD yeah interesting stuff okay well I was able to heat the old, heat the heat sink up with the air gun a bit and uh, twist it free and it took a, left a little bit of adhesive but the whole pads there so it's stuck back on and I just put a spring over it just for a bit of safety um, 
I'm not sure where to get that kind of sticky pad. It just it looked like the grey stuff, but white, very thin, and had a bit of uh, adhesive on both sides. So yeah, it's either that or I uh, strip it all off and put regular CPU cooler compound on it, heat sink compound, and uh, maybe stretch a couple of springs over it just to keep it in place. It's not like it can drop down with the, the sh heat shield the way it is, and it doesn't put it puts bugger all tension on it, so it's not going to push it against the board and buckle the board. Uh, another big killer of BGA chips as the Xbox has found out. Um, yeah, so ready to reconnect ribbons and power it back up. Let's go. Well, if this doesn't work, I'm still posting it. All well, the video, that is, because it's worth a try for, I think, for the sake of 35 or 40 bucks, whatever this board was. It's worth a shot. Power on. Hang on. Input. Well, you're not doing anything. That's even more unusual. Oh, there we go. I brought it up. Nope. Still the same problem. That's not good. No, wait. Is it this side again? Or is the whole screen now out? Oh, that's not good. It looks like the whole thing's gone dark now. I wonder if this is a digital board issue. Damn it. Either that or the panel itself. Let's reseat those uh, ribbon cables and try again. Yeah, see, that's the artifacting it had before, and that's what really concerns me about maybe it is the panel or the drive board. Um, Few, quite a few people suggested T-Con, but now not so sure, especially with the way it's behaving with the different board in it. I'm going to put a signal to it and see what it does. Yeah, now I know this video clip isn't the brightest of things to play on it, but yeah, it's never been this bad before. Mind you, it was pretty normal when it was uh, warming up, but now it's been running for a while, it's gotten a lot darker. And I have tried shining extra light in through the gaps in the back of the panel. That doesn't do jack. Uh, the backlight's definitely working properly. Like, it's at full brightness. But the panel itself is not being driven correctly. And swapping the T-Con board, if anything, did it made it worse. So I'm wondering if the panel itself is out or the uh, digital board below the T-Con board, the input processor it's now starting to overlap past the halfway mark because T-Con's divided into left and right side and you can see it's almost up to here you can start to see the cutoff and this is still very dark so that's not particularly good anyway it was worth a try it wasn't that expensive and I could probably sell the other board anyway so yeah I might take this board out and put the other one back in again anyway thanks for watching uh, stay tuned for more on this one it's a nice set and since my uh Hitachi has finally gone blank. It's still illuminated, just doesn't display any pictures. I was hoping to fix this up and, uh, well, use it. But yeah, it looks like we'll be looking at my Hitachi Plasma next. Panel still illuminates, like we've got full brightness and everything, but there's just absolutely no picture. And that's probably related to the dithering that it was doing, the multicoloured sort of snow you see over the image now and then. Uh, particularly dark scenes, you'd see a lot of multicoloured pixels. But, yeah, we'll have a look at that one. Somebody said its cap's going bad. That was a while ago I found out about that, and it's done two year, a year and a half or two years since then without dying. So, yeah, who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for...